virtual reality for people with maybe limited mobility. Yes. Yeah, so let me start with the with the basics, with the introduction. What, what do you what do you need to use actual virtual reality? So first of all, you hold the headset on your head. Uh, you hold the controllers in your hand. There are buttons, of course, on these controllers. And basically, you need to use your range of movement in order to inter interact with the, um, with the virtual world. And by the same, if you are not able to do one of these things, you have some limitation. Uh, and uh, and walking VR is trying to address at least these three three elements um, listed here. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so why why we can, we cannot why walking VR? Why there is a problem? Am I sharing the screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. Why we have this, why I'm even talking about this, right? So here we have some list of the, of the elements, like holding the controllers, limitation of movement, uh, or recline position. This, this, these are the elements what usually stop Did we lose Greg? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. It's not just me then. <laughs> no, he did uh, freeze once before. Okay. Yeah, it looks like he's completely logged off for a moment, maybe doing the same thing I did. Should we just move on and we'll stop once he comes back? Yeah, sounds like a good plan. So if you want to know a crazy and funny and sad story. My car is full of water. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, Did you drive into a, a river or something? <laughs> so I've got a Land Rover, which is supposedly you can drive it through a river and it's fine. Yeah. However, we've been having crazy rain recently, and um, I, I think. Well, I know I've got a, I've got this like huge moonroof, sunroof thing that has a crack in it, and I dare say, water's got in there, and then somehow made its way down. All of the floor wells are wet, but then literally while I'm in this traffic, every time I stop, I hear like, <laughs> sounds like I'm in a river, and it's just water's flowing underneath the car, like through some cavity in the car. I would be careful. Scary. Don't total your car. <laughs> well, if I pull it, total it in a river, I'll be okay. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what's going on there. 
Um, oh, did somebody, did he just join back in? Yes, yeah. he did. Okay, so. Okay, so I, I will I will just show a video pre, uh, from YouTube, which is virtual reality, which is basically showing how how working VR is working. Why generally it has been um, created. Do you see my screen? Yes. It could be an amazing thing. It gives people the opportunity to experience things they wouldn't otherwise be able to, like flying or traveling through space, as well as more down to earth activities, such as just getting a good workout. It's not quite so easy for everyone though. With virtual reality or VR, you use real world movements to control your actions in the virtual world. This is a big part of what makes it so immersive. But what happens when your real world movements are limited as a result of disability? It means some VR games and experiences are simply not an option for you. For example, a game may require you to turn around, but if you use a wheelchair, that's not so easy, especially if you're holding the controllers. And some disabilities mean you can't grip things firmly, so you may not be able to hold the controllers at all, or you might have problems using the buttons. Thankfully, there's a solution. Walking VR is software that allows you to adapt to VR environment so that limitations in your movement don't have to mean limitations in gameplay. It works on the Steam platform and integrates with the Steam VR environment, meaning it can be used successfully with almost any game. Let's look at four ways walking VR can adapt an existing virtual reality environment Yes, yeah, so basically in introduction, there was information, right? I, I said uh, that um, you need to move in order to move in, in virtual reality. Uh, in most cases, of course, there are uh, sometimes experiences when you are just looking around, but in most cases, you have to interact. This is, uh, let's say, the best, the best case. Uh, and uh, now in video, you will see uh, four major features of walking VR. Um, why there is some problem and and propose solution to to this. So let's get started with uh, some. But the first case is when you when you have a healthy hand. We can say this way, but. <clears throat> You have a limitation in in the in the ability to walk, so you are on the wheelchair, and uh, apparently there is problem because you, you often have to reach out for some elements or turn around or grab something from the floor, and even this can be a problem for when you are when you are, for example, in bed on the wheelchair. And the proposed feature is something we can call. Uh, virtual movement or space drag. So you can imagine that instead of going to some location, you just grab the space and bring it uh, to you. So let's see how it works. To make it more usable by people with disabilities. The first is a feature called virtual movement. This is helpful for when you can't walk, but you can move your hands and hold a controller. To you so you see, she is kind of waving with one hand. It's in the right. Actually, she's waving with the right hand, and this makes her like turn around in the game. And what is very important is that this game is not designed to have this ability, right? So we made this game somehow more accessible. And I have to say that the. Mm, the awareness about the problem general increased over time, and the, and the games are more and more um, have let's say more more features uh, which which makes them accessible. For example, like uh, ability to pick up elements from the ground automatically, 
I've seen that things like this appear in the game, but they are still very, very basic uh, features. Walk, but you can move your hands and hold a controller. To use it, you simply grab space with a button and then move or turn around. The second is controller position adjustment. With a condition like muscular dystrophy, for example, you might be able to hold the controllers, but not maintain them at the height required by the game. Position adaptation allows you to adjust the position in which the controllers are visible in the VR environment. In the simplest case, this means showing the controllers higher in VR than they are in reality. But there are more advanced options too, like using rotation or the distance the controllers are from your body. The boost part of this feature amplifies your physical gestures. This turns small movements in the real world into much larger ones in the VR environment, making it easier to pick up or throw virtual items. This can be particularly helpful if you have a limited range of hand or arm movements. Oh, and you can also adjust the controller position for each hand individually. This can be helpful where one hand or arm is weaker than the other, for those that have had a stroke, say. It means you can compensate for the weaker arm enable you to bring the virtual hand up into your field of view. This is something that can have a positive psychological effect. And there are more parameters that you can adjust besides. The third feature. Yes, yeah, so, so the second and third feature, we can, we can separate them, is uh, like explaining the video for people who have limited movement. And I'm sure you are familiar with the something called mirror therapy it's a little bit like it's similar to this but not exactly this because in mirror therapy you are seeing the reflection of the healthy hand and here you are uh, let's say adjusting the for the limitation that you have so if you have small range of movement then we make it uh, more Sorry, I, 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 I just I'm, I'm missing some some words. We, if you have limited movement in reality, we can make it appear like a bigger movement in VR, or we can just adjust the position of the controller. So, for example, if someone has spinal spinal muscular atrophy and he cannot raise hand only to the level of the waist, let's say, we cannot visually bring it up so the person feels like he's playing on the normal uh, level and it, it works very well I, I must say I, i've seen um, very really really huge amount of of gameplays uh, with people with different conditions and and i must say that they play uh, regular titles from the from the game library uh, they are very engaged and they have very good workout and exercises. Um, and for example, this uh, adjustment of position works very well uh, for the stroke. And I've seen it a few times when the person with the stroke uh, somehow um, were able to activate the hand, even though it was not so easy during the exercise, right? Because we have to remember that. Uh, when you when you say to the person that please do this exercise then the person is um, he's actually he or she is doing it because this is the job he have to do right but when you have the game it's uh, like internal motivation that drives you to 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 do this activity and the games that that we are talking about are the from the top 10 or top 20 on the on the market so um, we don't have this effect which i've seen uh, in few therapy centers that they buy some uh, vr uh, therapy hardware and, and the games and they can be they can be very good for therapy but they are not so attractive to play them so long and the, the beat saber you can play really really long if you if you know this game so there are there are some differences some important factors when you 
when we are talking here about giving the games to the uh, to the people and we have to remember that uh, some people make uh, therapy for the whole life or a very long time so they need something that they they like right not only just the that it that it here that it there uh, and uh, do this because it's obligation so it's gameplay let's with go. Personal assistant. so now we have this assistant and okay so let's see how it works some people can move the controllers well enough but i have problems with buttons and other tactile aspects of gameplay gameplay with personal assistant allows another person to assist the disabled player using a separate game controller. They can make helpful adjustments to the VR position and also perform button presses, making gameplay easier for the disabled user. So this is very, um, I'm not sure if you really see what happens because it's quite a um, specific case. When you are VR, then uh, if you are a healthy person, then it's obvious for you that you can reach to the elements, you can make a small step forward, small step left, uh, and, and, and grab the things, right? But if you on the wheelchair, and especially um, you can, you, you may even hold the controller, but you cannot press the button. It's, it's, it can be a problem. And the, the gameplay with assistance, which you see the, the therapist is holding, it's actually fixing this, these two things. So if you, if you look on the video, you see that the person is kind of shifting from the floor and going uh, to the, it's not shelf, let's say table, right? He's going to the table. Yeah, and also uh, the person was holding this and then she uh, released it, right? And the question is, how did it happen? And uh, on the gamepad, there are some buttons. On the gamepad, there are some buttons which are, uh, let's say, imitating uh, the presses on the regular controller. And uh, you can use also the joystick uh, to move the person in, in this space. So as far as I heard from the, from the let's say users, it's, it's, very, it's very basic, but, but very useful uh, feature that, that helps with the gameplay. Finally, there is hand tracking. Many people have problems holding controllers, those with some forms of cerebral palsy, for example, you could attach the controllers to yourself in some way, but this can be uncomfortable and they can be easily dropped. By using walk-in VR in conjunction with Kinect and potentially other tracking devices, you can interact with VR directly using your hands as controllers. Indeed, many games and applications can be played this way, including workout routines. Put together, all these features mean you can finally focus on the whole point of the exercise, playing the game. We're so excited to be able to open these possibilities up to a wider audience. Walk in VR is available now on Steam. Install it today and find out how much it can help you. Yes, and uh, this is a very short presentation of hand tracking. And I just wanted to uh, stop this for a moment. As you see, he's doing a combo. Combo is doing a series of, of hits without any failed hit, right? So this is 24. And if you take a step back and look, you may feel that he doesn't have entirely control on, 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 on what's going on, but we find that uh, he's doing really well. Here. Yeah, so basically what it means, it, it means that before we had case when the 
he was not able to play this game, right? He was not able to hold the controllers. Then we use some things like hand tracking. We use adjustment of controller position a little bit because one of his hand is, is to the left, right? And he it's not in front of his face like you would expect it to be when when playing Beat Saber, right? Because you want to operate, you want to hit the these boxes instead his hands are like this right somewhere at the ear and then basically somehow his um, motorics i don't know the the english word but the um, let's say perception of of, of 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 the body of the of the controlling has changed and he's able to uh, play um, the game like Beat Saber and and make quite a good result. And I don't, I don't really, uh, I'm not a researcher and I don't work on the university. But uh, I, I, I keep thinking about this um, very often, like a year or more. Um, what is the actual? Uh, um, what is the actual, what, what really happens when the person who have a, mm, mm, uh, not correct movement, like, I'm sorry, maybe my English is not very well, but I'm thinking what happens when the person like, like the guy who's playing has the, um, let's say the, the position of hands, for the most of his life that is not letting him interact properly with the things. I'm saying about things in real life, right? So let's say use two hands to, to do something, right? So for the most of life, he's not able to do it, but he still is doing some exercises, right? He's using his phone probably with one hand only, right? But he have to first. Uh, uh, he basically is not able to manipulate things, right, or or even hold in the in the simple way. But suddenly we 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 are giving some games, and uh, by adjusting the position of hands in VR, which is not possible in real life, because in real life I cannot take his hand and rotate it physically. But here in in VR in VR I can rotate. It and suddenly uh, he uh, may be able to interact with the things in a way he's not able to uh, in, in in real life, right? I'm not sure if you understand what I mean. This is just a game, right? But in general, it's about different kind of interaction because he may be able to hold the the somehow the the drink or use the smartphone or smoke cigarettes, but most likely with one hand, right? Because this is uh, how, how this hand is positioned. And now he, suddenly he is able to, to, to use it like a, with a with the more, let's say, classic position. And I would really like to see if, 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 if there is some, um, let's say, if there is some progress on, on this kind of activity. And I'm, I must say also one thing I, I've seen, I was launching this game sometimes also for people with ser server policy, but the people who were able to uh, interact more slowly and I could see how they take their time and they hit these boxes. And I must say, it's really amazing because this can be even slowed down to be to be more let's say uh, for people who are not so let's say fast and I, I would really like I hope somewhere some so one day someone will take the effort and take people with server parsi and make uh, the note how the progress is going through a few months because I've seen it just a few times and I think this is this is something that really really Amazing, uh, yeah, okay, but let's go.
Yeah, it also works very well with uh, with the stroke because uh, uh, when you say please do it, right? It doesn't always work, but when you uh, have the hand, uh, often with, with the stroke, the cases I've seen, there is half of the body paralyzed and the hand is very low, like at the level of the waist and the therapist is giving some orders, right? Please do this, do that, do that. Because this is the exercise, you have to do it for your health. And if you lift the hand to the level of your eye, you interact because, because this is your hand, you see, right? When it's down below, you do it because you are supposed to do it, because this is exercise, because you are doing it for your health. But when you see it in front of your eyes, even though it's down below, you just interact because you are doing what you are seeing, right? So this is, again, something I've seen a few times, and even though later, I was hearing therapists like they were saying, look, look, he, 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 he activated the hand so easily, right? So there are things that kind of works. Okay, and maybe the last video. It's the first customer. Uh, uh, and I, I asked them to record some material for me. Yeah, and here it is. <laughs> Avalon Active, czyli dział Fundacji Avalon, e, wirtualną rzeczywistość ma w swojej ofercie od października 2018 roku. Dzięki wirtualnej rzeczywistości podopieczni Avalon Active bawią się grając w gry jednocześnie, uczestniczą w rehabilitacji, którą sprytnie przemyca fizjoterapeuta. Pacjenci wykonują odpowiednie ruchy, muszą czasami zwiększyć jakiś zakres swojego ruchu, chcą sprostać wymaganiom gry wykonują jakieś ruchy, pozycje, muszą gdzieś dosięgnąć, coś złapać i tak dalej, więc to wykonuje w, ty, w, ty, w tym świecie gry ale jednocześnie ten fizjoterapeuta właśnie przemyca rehabilitację, prowokując niejako wykonanie danych ruchów, po to, żeby ten trening wirtualny równał się z treningiem realnym z rehabilitacją. To jest taka komponenta, dodatek. Walking VR jest takim koniecznym uzupełnieniem terapii w wirtualnej rzeczywistości, jeżeli chcemy działać precyzyjnie z pacjentami. Nie wszystkie jednostki chorobowe, z którymi są nasi pacjenci, świetnie sobie radzą w standardowych parametrach gier. Niektóre dysfunkcje funkcjonalne naszych pacjentów wymagają od tego, do tego specjalnego dostosowania. I dzięki właśnie Walking VR jest to możliwe, bo zmieniając różne parametry, Możemy tak zasterować już w tej wstępnej fazie udogodnieniami w grze, że możemy podnieść jakieś kontrole do góry, obrócić go o 360 stopni, przesunąć w czasie przestrzeni, zwiększyć jego czułość, przez co pacjenci z dużymi deficytami ruchowymi tak naprawdę realnie mogą odbyć trening w takich warunkach, że gra jest specjalnie dostosowana właśnie dla niej. Taką możliwość daje właśnie Walking VR, że dostosowujemy indywidualnie dla danego podopiecznego warunki gry. Najczęściej korzystamy z gry Box VR, Audio Shield, Beat Saber, Funhouse, Runaway. To chyba są takie naj, naj, najczęściej używane przez nas gry. Poza tym korzystamy z gry dostarczonej przez Walking VR. Jest to gra dla osób z dużymi deficytami neurologicznymi, skierowana, dedykowana dla osób, które nie mają dowolnych, zamiarowych ruchów. Wirtualną rzeczywistość używamy do pracy z praktycznie z każdym naszym pacjentem, z każdym beneficjentem. Są to pacjenci z przeróżnymi e, chorobami, jednostkami neurologicznymi, ortopedycznymi. E, są to na przykład stwardnienia rozciane, e, porażenia mózgowe, urazy rdzenia kręgowego, urazy czaszkowo-mózgowe, strofie mięśniowe, rdzeniowe zaniki mięśni, e, neuropatię, borelioza, no i wszelkie e, inne schorzenia jeszcze ortopedyczne. Zauważyliśmy, że pacjenci ćwiczący w wirtualnej rzeczywistości odważniej dokonują takich fizycznych postępów w trakcie treningu w wirtualnej rzeczywistości, a także ma to przełożenie później w realnym świecie podczas funkcjonalnej rehabilitacji. Tak jakby ta wirtualna ćwiczenia w wirtualnej rzeczywistości dopełniają 
tą rehabilitację klasyczną, funkcjonalną fizjoterapię. Avalon Acti zajmuje się rehabilitacją osób z niepełnosprawnością ruchową, osób powyżej 16 roku życia. Prowadzi rehabilitację dofinansowaną. Działania Avalonu Acti mają na celu zwiększenie sprawności i samodzielności osób z niepełnosprawnością ruchową. Okay, and uh, maybe last but not least is, do you see my screen now? Yes. Yep. So I think you know this website, right? And there is some research about uh, walking VR made on by the University of Birmingham of Alabama. And uh, yeah, I think you. this is the screen from Walking VR, which I'm very proud of. And they were using this in the, in the hospital for treatment. And I also hear very similar cases, uh, very similar description uh, of uh, how it works that the patient, they were playing some boxing games and they were so excited to, that they even almost sit on the, on the, on the bed, right? Mm, yeah, I, I must say basically that uh, the best is when I have opportunity to show it uh, on some real cases, because now even, I don't have to even explain how it works because then the, Often the um, the therapist they say, look, look, he did it, or look, he did that, right? Because it's it's quite natural uh, what what walking VR is doing. If you think about it, um, if you think about it, uh, walking VR is basically a set of tools. It's not a button that you just press the button and game is accessible. But there are like four or no, I don't know five concepts that you have to understand and then you basically use it as a kind of tool to to adjust sometimes a little bit here or a little bit there uh, depending on the on the particular uh, case yeah that's basically um, almost everything I wanted to share the, the last thing is uh, licensing which is something I'm, I'm working now uh, because, um, yeah, so I, I know that maybe that uh, I will be honest with you, <laughs> I was maybe too much focused on the, uh, on the future, on the features, and I wanted to, the um, walking VR to have everything uh, that, that the people um, were asking, for example, uh, there is a feature which is called recline gameplay to play when you are on the bed and not not uh, necessary a vertical position. And I added this feature because there were two person asking me to add it. So so basically now I'm I'm working on the more on the business uh, part of this. I'm, upgrading or designing the website. Uh, I, I want to make the licensing more clear for everyone. Um, and basically the licensing is maybe not, not perfect, but uh, the basic version is free on the Steam, which I heard from some people is not the best idea, but it's free with uh, unlimited functionality. And the only limitation is that every few minutes uh, there is a banner which is uh, showing hi, this is a free version of Walking VR. Uh, then there is premium version on the Steam, uh, and uh, which is which is supposed to be only for individual users. So if, if there is commercial person he or she uh, shouldn't 
buy it. And by, by commercial, I'm saying uh, a therapy center, a VR arcade, uh, some research facility or university. Mm, yeah, and I will be more working now to, to make this difference uh, more more clear to everyone. Um, the, the cost of the premium version, which is actually removing the banner, is 40 euro or dollars, 40 dollars. And the cost of the uh, commercial version is 100 dollars per month. Uh, and this is something I have uh, for the pilot and for other version, which I sold like locally in my country. So I believe this is not a big amount for, for, for America, <laughs> for, uh, for universities or therapy centers. Um, yeah. So basically I, I cover everything I wanted, right? I, I, I also touched this part of the business model because uh, I had uh, uh, started conversation with Randy and, and, and so he said I, I should also uh, mention about this part and maybe maybe you can give me your feedback on this so it will be very useful for me okay so that's end of my story and uh, thank you for for listening and i don't know maybe there are any questions greg so thanks very much for um coming in and, and sharing all this there's to to recap everything that you said because especially the folks who are new to this they may have got everything but i just want to make sure that A, my understanding is correct, but also help everybody here. So the way this works is actually pretty simple. If you're gonna be using VR, it, it basically allows anyone with any disability to have better movement and interactions. And it works by you basically clicking a button that says start walking VR at the beginning. And then when you do that, you're then able to manipulate and adjust any of the movements that you make. So if you typically, you know, let's say, let's use Beat Saber as the easiest example, I think, where you have to do these big swipes. If you need, if you can't do that big swipe, you can only do this swipe, you can adjust that swipe to be extended. If you have one hand that's stuck in a set position, right, you can adjust the default positions where it thinks your hands are to make those interactions possible. If your hand is turned at a, a different angle to what typically expected to, to, to use in that experience, you can adjust that angle. So it gives you freedom of control to completely manipulate the, the hand controllers in the experience itself to make it open to everyone. And then if you have real issues with your hands, you can add an additional controller like an Xbox controller and have a second person use those controls to everybody. So that means potentially that it's good for anybody with a disability, but it also opens the door for OT and PT kind of therapy where you can really help people, encourage people to play a game that they would be fearful of because it's too complicated, too hard, too difficult to do. And then similarly, um, unless I'm mistaken, Greg, you can also potentially do the opposite as well a, a bit, right? If there is a game that's almost too simple to use, you could adjust it to make their movement smaller, to make them encourage them to move further too. So particularly in the PT side, I feel like in the rehab side, that could be that could be really beneficial. Uh, so that's one. The second layer of that is that you are trying to make this, um, you know, to keep going. The problem is that a lot of companies like yours, you have this fantastic idea that's tech for good. It makes the world a better place but you don't make any money off of it. And then what happens is the business goes out of business. From everything I understand, your offering is completely unique and it essentially opens up every single game that exists on Steam to be usable to everybody. So it's super important that 
the likes of us and every, all of the our patients or anyone we speak to who wants to get into VR but feel are fearful that they can't do it because of their, their disability or their situation, you know, it, this is something that actually brings this to everyone. Um, and on top of all of that, you're still trying to figure out the pricing. So you've got this, this scheme right now that you're trying to put together and you'd love to hear some feedback about what is suitable and what's not. I, I can tell you at least on that part, first of all, everything you've done is fantastic. There's no doubt about it. When it comes to the pricing part, that's always a tricky thing. It, I think even the people on this call will tell you pricing is hard. And some of the people here will have several people that they'll use several times a week in VR. There'll be others that only use it occasionally. And it's hard possibly in some cases to, to balance that out. One of my clients, for example, has three, three VR headsets. Of those three VR headsets, they probably only would like it on, on one that goes to the group that really need that. Um, is $100 the right amount? That's a really interesting one. And I would, from my experience, say sometimes absolutely that's possible. Sometimes that's not enough, right? If it, it might be something that you figure out is based off of the amount of use that you're getting, that the clients are getting out of it to try and make it fairer. Or, you know, I know some in, some in the industry have thousands of headsets, right? And so having a commercial license where they're only paying 100 bucks if they've got 500 people using it, and they should, I mean, everybody who's, actually have massive amounts of headsets should have this software with it. There's no doubt about it. So I'm going to shut up now, but that was a very long answer to say, yeah, I think $100 is, is fine in some cases, but in some cases it's completely under. And in some cases it may be over. What might be worth doing, which I've seen before, is um, you put in some, some kind of language that basically says, if, if you don't, Think this is appropriate please email and to be honest what we found in the past with our companies done that the companies who who can afford it will just pay it they realize that's not that expensive a lot of companies are paying over a thousand bucks for a cleaning box right and so a thousand bucks to open it up to a lot more people is absolutely reasonable uh, but if you're only using it a few times but they still want to support you and having a little bit of flexibility and building relationship you could go a long way but I'm going to shut up. I'm going to pass it out to the rest of the team. Thank you. Yeah, Jeff, I agree with that 100%. It's a, it is an absolutely awesome piece of, uh, of work, and I, I use it all the time. And I know in the United States, a lot of hospitals have a problem with uh, monthly renewals. It, it's hard for their billing system. And I think it would be better off if you selected a higher cost for a purchase of the software, a one-time uh, purchase of the software. Um, and I don't know about universities, but especially the nonprofit hospitals, they really have a hard time paying a monthly fee. It's just not built into their system. It's, it's hard to do. So if you can do a one-time purchase, that would be better, even if it's a little bit higher. Great, thanks. So I just make a bigger price and pay them once a year and my, my problems will be gone. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I wondered, and this might be super naive of me, um, I realized, Greg, that you do have two tiers, like one's the freemium and then you've got the individual. I wonder if... if because we talked, Jeff mentioned, like, for some, it might not be enough. And for others, it might be too much. So wondering if like, tiered pricing, like adding on to your tiered pricing might be um, another avenue, like having three instead of two, um, where you do target those nonprofit folks that um, are looking for resources, but can't quite keep up with their billing. Um, and so just having a different type of um, business model for just some of those big different types of industries. So like a nonprofit. And then for those that are clearly profitable, you can go higher. Okay. Thank you.
I think we're in the same situation as what Randy talked about, where it's difficult when you have subscription-based um, costs. So usually if we can do a one-time thing, it's easier for us to find funding for that type of a scenario. Okay, so I think this is the simplest thing I can solve. <laughs> so even if it's, um, yeah, basically it, it shouldn't be problem at all, right? Uh, to to have a one yearly payment. I would also just say, don't sell yourself short, Craig. Like, you did a lot of incredible work, so. Yeah, I think um, the, the, the problem with working VR is that in order to understand it, you need to try VR with people who are disabled, have disabilities, and then see the problems, and then find information about working VR, right? Because I, like more than a year ago, when the COVID started, I, I, I hired a salesman and I had a lot of conversations. And I found that, uh, I don't know if the VR was, VR was already popular, but maybe now it's more popular because I feel like I'm, uh, more people are aware of the problems. And it's when there was not so awareness of the problems, right? which I explain about with, let's say, proposed solution for each, it's, it's kind of hard to see that we really need that, right? But we don't have VR yet, so what is really the problem? So now VR is more popular, I think, and uh, there is also more awareness that we need some adjustments. Great. It's basically a long, long, long term uh, project, right? And um, it's not something that you do quickly and then you sell it and it pops up. I think it's, it's um, something that needs time to build awareness, but we will see. Hey, Greg, how... How many, if you don't mind me asking, do you have an idea of how many downloads you've had? Um, I have it somewhere. Okay. I, Is yeah. it like 10,000 or do you have an idea? Like loose number? I, I, I'm not sure I, I can say now, right? Uh, the, the reason I'm going there is I feel like uh, this is a no brainer for anybody who has a physical impairment to use. Mm -hmm. And I think in all honesty, a lot of it's a chicken and egg scenario. Most people would be scared of getting VR or a lot of people would be scared of getting VR because they don't realize that a solution like yours exists. Um, so on, the problem is if they don't know it, they won't get VR because of it. And even if they did, it's like, how do they find out about you to know about it? Um, yeah, you know, I, I had, uh, actually, I, I did, like you, I said, I did some uh, marketing time and the sales time. And I, I reach out to one, it, it makes me think a lot because I reached to one organization and I saw, I show this and they say, wow, this is so great. And when I tell them, okay, so what do you think? Do you want to deploy it? And this, they, instead of deploy, they went to Facebook and they say, hey, Facebook, can you add this to your Oculus Quest? And then I say, what, what? <laughs> you know, and this is what happens then that um, sometimes the such projects may, you know, it's very complicated, right? Yeah. This situation that she just went to Facebook and she said, uh, Facebook, please add it to your solution, right? Instead of go with me. And I cannot blame her, right? I cannot say she, she did something wrong. This is just... But you can't do this on the in Oculus today, right? On the Quest without PC, no. 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 Right. I, but I mean, even like Facebook don't... Or Oculus... Facebook, Meta, whatever you want to call them now. <laughs> uh, but they don't offer anything like this level of accessibility that, that you bring to the table. Is that fair? No, 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 no. Yeah. They I mean, have so some, they, 
I, I must say I was impressed because they have uh, when they have this checklist for the software, yeah. <clears throat> they have few points about accessibility, <clears throat> like the some features for people with color uh, that doesn't see well yep. or uh, to let you play uh, the game even if you are sitting without uh, going to the ground without uh, i don't know when you pick something from the ground right yeah so i, I think this is good feature because now when you are on the wheelchair and something falls to the ground you don't need to go down and pick it up but you just can can do it some kind of like uh, magnetic way it goes back to your hand so this is good feature but of course there is no features like like this one so that that's one question i had is have you approached any any providers like facebook or or steam themselves or because a lot of there's a lot of interests at a platform level of making platforms accessible. I mean, Apple's put a lot of money into it. Microsoft's put a lot of money into it, uh, and so on. Have you considered working directly with some uh, sort of providers yeah, so of actually, or software platforms? To uh, yes, yeah, so I'm part of the. We can call it. I'm part of the. Steam platform, right? Because this is on the Steam. And I also spoke with, I think, uh, some very important person from Facebook um, about my solution. And actually, I said to them how it works and uh, that it should be part of the platform. And they, I, I asked them if they have something to propose to me, and they say that they will see. So, but I, I'm not sure if, if it would be possible for them to do everything that we have, right? That I have at the moment in the, in the working VR, because I don't know, I don't know, but it's, it's really hard to say. And like you say, Apple is a platform that is accessible by design, right? You don't have to do a... Uh, software that is accessible because the platform is already accessible right and the, i know that the iphone is is mostly used by the people with visual impairments right yeah. so so the good news is that i spoke with the facebook i told them everything and one day maybe they take everything that i did and, and just add it right because they can do everything but uh, I would say that uh, from the perspective of the um, of the VR that is for masses, for mass user, they may not add it. But of course, I don't know it. I know sometimes another approach we have seen with um, some of the software stuff is, is clinical licenses or clinical demos so that we can have it at a center and then people can test drive it is sort of the idea. So they come in, they can see if it works for them before they purchase and then they go ahead and they buy the hardware. Yeah, yeah. And like that type of thing I've seen happen too. With yeah, but this is for local sales, right? Sorry? This is for local sales, right? When you, uh, I, I, the licenses I have so far are in my country because actually because before COVID, I was quite actively uh, selling them. And this is the best way it works. And the, the, the case that you are talking about, it's probably also for the local sales, right? And I, I've seen, uh, and maybe this is how it should work the best because, I, when, when I was uh, visiting uh, different uh, therapy centers, I've seen that they have different hardware and I say, did you buy it, did you buy it? And they say, no, no, we're just testing it, right? So I think this is something you, you are talking about is, 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 is 
is very similar case and that's also why it may be uh, harder to to sell it remotely right yeah i mean what's interesting to me greg is i feel like you, one of the big guys has to just buy you out integrate you in partner up right that's that's the real way forward and they should do that we just need to help you get your name into those people because this in all honesty this should be free for everyone and you should be sitting on your yacht somewhere making feeling good that you've helped the world make come a better place this should just be standard in this kind of software and just isn't yet because they're not fully aware of the problems that exist and i, I forget who it was i might be Ibrahim or, or or nima but someone said like you know this is a topic du jour this is something that is becoming more and more evident every day it seems so it is just a matter of time until you get noticed or someone else comes along and does what you're doing but i don't think that's going to happen at least in the short term it takes a lot of effort uh so you know you got my full support i can get you connected to a few people uh, and a few of these the big companies the hardware manufacturers which i think is the best way for you here um as well as you know on the sales side too i mean i don't think you need to stop that but i i see this should just be integrated into the hardware right out the gate okay thank you yeah and i think uh i mean as as vr uh grows um you know any large company large university that wants to use this you know use vr uh, uh you know at any level of scale needs to meet in the United States ADA uh, compliance standards. And so, you know, while there's a lot of people trying out VR and doing things in VR, it's not going to be possible to do it at scale at any large institution in the US until you ensure that that VR is, is you know, is yeah, acceptable so, and compliant. So. Like so I, I would appreciate any, any, any contact and lead that I can uh, make a presentation and make them using it, not make them. <laughs> it's not, I don't want, <laughs> uh, uh, that I can show it and, 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 and they may start using it, right? And uh, I also am aware that depending who I, I will meet, uh, they can be some smaller centers, maybe they get licensed, that would be super uh, great. And maybe some bigger, uh, not bigger people, let's, let's say more important people who are uh, make decisions like, like you are talking about and or, or bigger therapy centers, they would like to have some project uh, to integrate it. They can invite me to US, right? And everything can happen. So if you, uh, uh, I'm really appreciate some 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 contacts and and, and uh, yeah. I have a quick question, Greg, um, because I'm, my brain's pinging about ideas that I could connect you with. They're not the very VIP folks, but they're the on on the ground folks. Oh, that sure. appreciate. But I wondered. Um, you said that your um, Walking VR works in um, Steam. Um, yes. Is it hardware agnostic? Like, could you, if you were using an Oculus Quest, could you license it out or a PlayStation? No, no. It works on the P something we can call PC VR. Okay. So Got it. Sorry. So it needs a, a, that extra oomph not just a mobile headset, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, and your contact information <laughs> so that we can make the connections yeah. would be lovely. Okay, so I think I don't have any contact to you, so maybe Jeff. Yeah, and I, um, in the email from earlier, the intro email I sent out, I did put his LinkedIn profile in there, uh, but I'll I'll send another one, Greg, and I'll put your email and your LinkedIn and your Twitter. They're the good ones to use, and your YouTube maybe. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.
I tell you what, Greg, if you do, you, do you have a little, maybe it's even in your, um, do you have it in your footer of your email? If it is, I can just forward that on. I'll just forward everyone your email. Yeah, there is. Footer. Yeah? Okay. Excellent. All right. Do we have any more questions? To, what time is it with you, Greg? It's uh, quarter past two a.m. Oh. Ouch. Greg, thanks so much for doing this. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Uh, Greg, where are we? Where are you showing up for? Like uh, any events coming up soon? Okay, so I I I decided to uh, actually to to try more virtual uh, events like 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 even this one, right? But I don't have, uh, I haven't done research yet, but I will try to apply uh, for those. You are, you're speaking at the um, accessi also accessibility VR event coming up as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I think. And I know Randy and myself are a part of that group with, um, what's that guy's name? Um, Tom Logan, yeah. Uh, so when is that? It's 9 of December, I think. Okay. Oh, it's I'm a while. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. All right. Well, I know you need to get some rest. Does anybody else have any more questions? Questions for Greg? And we let him get some sleep. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Thank Greg. You well. So what's the plan for the rest of the meeting? Uh, and yeah, you can listen in. We just talk about some of the stuff that we're working on, some some kind of things that we're we're hearing about that's going on in the marketplace or events that are going on, a new hardware, software that's coming out. And we openly discuss those and how we can help each other. You're more than welcome to stay on. Okay, I would like to, but I think I'm not very good listening now. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye.